pop culture. In this modern day and age, you can't escape the stuff. From celebrities past and present, to our favourite TV shows or films. Even in some of the most remote places in the world, people can instantly recognise songs, logos, symbols, names and more. Why? Quite simply pop culture of course. Created back in 1998, Funko was founded by Mike Becker in his own house. Originally started up as a bobblehead company. Seven years on and 2005 rolls around, Mike decides to sell the company he had founded to Brian Mariotti. Over the coming years, the company evolved over time, changing its products they produced until stumbling on to what would be described as a gold mine. From my personal experience, a fact that always seems to attract non-collectors are the numbers when it comes to Funko Pops. Numbers like how many Pops a collector owns. I currently have 251 Pops and still counting. In my collection, I actually have over 1,200 Pops. In total, I own uh, about 95, I counted them last night, so I'm just trying to push for 100 now. I own 314 at last count, but it could be more, it could be less. I currently have about 254 Funko Pops, as you can see on the shelf above me back here. Many critics accuse Pop Funkos of being nothing more than a fad, trend or craze. Yet, the rebuttal to this argument could simply be, will Funko Pops be around as long as pop culture exists? Okay, so I started collecting um, in 2014, April, where I got my first car and I wanted to get something to decorate it with. So I got these two Pops, uh, the original Dark Knight Batman and the Man of Steel Superman. That because I love Batman and my nickname for my boyfriend is Superman, so we got these to put in the back of the car. I started collecting them because I've always wanted something to collect, um, but I've never really collected anything. And again, I just initially went for the Marvel ones, but then it just started to grow. Um, and yeah, now I've got Marvel ones and a lot of different ones as well. So I started collecting because I got given Groot as a present um, when the first Guardians of the Galaxy film came out, so that was the first one I got from my partner, and then since then I sort of had more as gifts and then started buying them myself. My mother-in-law bought, bought me two pops uh, last year and when I bought my new house I decided let's write a list and start collecting my favourite ones. I actually had five Funko Pops uh, that were given to me as a white elephant gift back in 2015. I didn't really know much about them and at the time I didn't really care for them that much because I didn't think that I would be able to display them in any way shape or form. I put, I put uh, two of them together, those are my first two, um, those are the only ones I bought, the other two are gifts uh, and that's kind of right really, I don't, I don't, wouldn't say I collect as much, I'm not a big, I'm not going to be collecting them a lot, I just buy ones that kind of, uh, a lot, I really like the characters. So. Now this has been about five years in the making of collecting figures. We've really had to expand um, and keep growing the collection and the shelves and everything like that. But it is really awesome to see how it's grown over the years. In my collection so far, the most expensive pop I own is the rare vaulted hound pop from Game of Thrones. But when it comes to the most expensive pops in the world, that's a whole different ball game. Valued at an astonishing $13,300, a rare glow-in-the-dark clockwork orange pop is reported as the most sought-after pop 
and pricey pop in today's market. Along with this pop there are tons of incredibly priced pops, many prices that non-collectors would find hard to believe. I don't even really think of the value most of the time. It's mostly the collectible and what the figure is just because there are so many cool ones and they're so detailed and different that I, I don't really think of the value, but it is around $25,000. Now, I never thought it would get that big. A quarter of a hundred thousand, that's pretty crazy. My personal reason for collecting uh, would be specifically with the anime ones. Uh, I'm just a big fan of those characters, especially at the time when I bought them. Like, I still like them, but uh, they just kind of meant something a bit more to me. I just wanted to sort of kind of collect some ones from my childhood, so I sort of kind of started doing the 90s stuff. So I've got sort of kind of some Power Rangers ones, Jeffrey the Giraffe on Toys R Us, Turtles as well, so I'm just going to try and collect a lot of stuff from my childhood as well, so, and then, again, just endless Marvel ones. I like having something that's sort of tangible that connects me to the things that I enjoy being a fan of, so be it Star Wars or Marvel or Westworld, whatever it is, it's nice to have something that you can sort of look at and sort of reminds you of that thing that you enjoy and it also gives me a bit of inspiration as well. We started with these two, then it was another two, then it was another two, then it was another one, then it was birthday presents, and then now we are in uh, January 2019 and I have a room in my house dedicated to it and I have five bookshelves, six, six bookshelves actually dedicated to my collection. Somehow in a collection of hundreds to thousands of pops, even the most dedicated collectors have a favourite figure in their collection. My pop that I love the most is the um, Alan and Carlos from Hangover. So with a little baby there, and that I've got that at home. I've got I've got one of these of my own at home. So, as well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I never thought that I'd be able to get a figure of Atom Bomb, but now we have one due to Funko Pops, or Sheldon Cooper, or Jack Jack from Incredibles, or I'm even trying to think. Your Conan, um, the talk show host. There's so many different random pops that are out there that are just so cool and so awesome to collect, and that's why I've been collecting them for so long. The favorite Funko Pop that. I own is this. It is the 10th Doctor that has regenerated from the 9th Doctor. It glows in the dark. I got it years ago. It is one of my favourite pops that I own. My favourite pop in my collection would probably be, um, I'd say 11 from Stranger Things, just because I think it really captures the character very well. It's a really nicely made figure. Um, it's just the detail on it is really great. And it's not like a super rare or exclusive one, but it's just something that sort of, it jumps out to me every time I look at it. In doing my research for this documentary, I came across an amazing cause based in the States, set up by Randy Lee and Kristen Barrera, with the main aim and purpose to supply Funko Pops to children's hospitals. The name of the cause is Pops for Patients. I got a chance to catch an interview with one of the co-founders, Randy. We managed to speak a bit more in detail about Pops for Patients and how it came about. Yeah, we're a group of like-minded people uh, across the world that collect and donate Funko Pop toys to children's hospitals. I mean, we have teams in, you know, Colorado, San Diego, New York. I mean, we, we have teams everywhere at this point. We have some, you know, we have one in Canada. We've had people step forward in like, you know, uh, England and Mexico. I mean, it's just, it's been, we've actually started something called p for p Worldwide as a social media hashtag to kind of <clears throat> combine everybody and Yes, I mean, we've definitely been growing in the past two years in a significant way. So it, me and my mom actually bonded quite heavily over the over these Funko Pops. Uh, I mean, she had more than I did at one point. I mean, she had like super really big rare ones and stuff like she was buying like the Christmas story ones. And she was a real big influencer, you know, as far as me getting into them. And sadly, she passed away last year, you know, out of the blue, like it just kind of, you know, boom, you know, hit her and she just passed away. But you know, I, I still do this in her honor and, uh, you know, I'm very grateful for the two and a half years that we had, you know, being into these together. So if it, if it weren't for her, then I, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. And I probably wouldn't have met the co-founder, Kristen. And, you know, the story would have never been told, most likely. Myself and Kristen, um, we both have severely handicapped or special needs kids. Um, her son, Braxton, 
<clears throat> has a CHD, which is congenital heart defect. And he is, uh, I think he's six years old. He's had seven, or wait, he's had five open heart surgeries already. And he's had a few like minor procedures. So, you know, she spent, you know, six months or longer at the Ronald McDonald house at the hospital in Nashville with him, you know, trying to fight for his life early on. Luckily he made it through and he, you know, he still struggles, but he's definitely way better than what he was early on. Um, <clears throat> myself, uh, I have a special needs daughter. Her name's Tori and she has cerebral palsy and uh, scoliosis and she's mentally retarded. She's deaf. I mean, she's got like a whole host of almost everything you can imagine. It kind of, it kind of forced me to retire from work early because she doesn't, she's not able to walk or do anything like that. So I had, I had to like, once she got too heavy for my wife to be able to take care of, I had to stop working and kind of switch roles with my wife, let her go back to work. And I stay at home with her all day and take care of her. <clears throat> so the drive behind it with that context being added is that both Kristen and I have spent a significant amount of time in the hospital with our kids early on. We know exactly what it's like to be you know, trapped there. We know exactly how sad it is and we know how little, you know, there is to enjoy about being in that, you know, situation. So that's kind of where the drive came in. It, it was very personal to us. So I think that kind of adds a nice little backstory to it. People know that this actually means something to us. We're not doing this for like the notoriety. We're not doing this to be cool or nothing. We're doing this because it matters to us personally. That's where it kind of, uh, I think that's where people kind of see how real real this all is. There was much more to mine and Randy's interview, but sadly, due to time constraints, I'm unable to show the full interview in this documentary. But I can't say it enough. If there is one thing that you take away from today's documentary, please be sure to go ahead and support Pops for Patients in any way you can. I'll let Randy tell you where you can go ahead and support the cause. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and hopefully see you again soon. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, at Pops for Patients. There's no spaces, there's no you know hyphens, it's all just Pops for Patients, one word. Okay. Um, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, it has a lot of celebrity endorsements and you know some of the interviews that we've done locally and stuff like that. We have a website, which is popsforpatients.org. Um, I haven't updated it here in a couple weeks because I've just been so busy with other things, but I do update it you know, every, every once in a while. and. Um, add new pictures from shows we've done and any celebrity endorsements, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much how to get in touch with us.